All right, guys, welcome back. I'm going to go through some stock charts, cover what I see as of this morning. Uh, the, the first couple hours of the morning session are over, and so we'll go ahead and look, see where, what we got going on, uh, hopefully spot a couple trade ideas. I'm going to start out today with a couple uh, individual stocks, and then we'll look at the general markets uh, and wrap up. So Etsy, starting off here. This one I've been kind of hammering on the last couple days. And... Uh, because I had a good setup and it, the setup really was a bearish setup. I, I see it selling off. So here's kind of what I see going on. Let's go to the daily here. Look at this. All right. So we got an uptrend line right there on the daily. It's just been walking up. We broke that trend right there. The trend broke and that break in trend was actually forecasted right here in the negative divergence. You can see that we actually had negative divergence right there where this made a, a lower high than the previous high, slightly lower, not a lot, but it was slightly lower. And then the um, the price right there made a higher high. So you had a price, here, here's your high of your price when you made the peak in the RSI, and then you came up and made a higher price in, in, the, uh, in actual price and a slightly lower peak in the RSI. So that is negative divergence. And that has just continued uh, to extend now what I'm expecting is the and then we you know we if we turn down right here and it looks like we're starting to then um, this peak right here will also be a lower peak than the previous peak it will extend the negative divergence and you can see we made a higher price up here so the the negative divergence continues to remain intact and it uh, looks objective to me and this is why I've been talking about it. So going to the hourly chart here, you can see that trend line that we broke right there. When we broke the trend line, we've come down. And then we ramped up for a back test, overshot it just a little bit, which is kind of what you want to see. You know, you want to see usually if something tags right on the trend line and then rejects, that's usually not where it's going to fail. It's a lot of the time it'll just reject a little bit and then it'll ramp up and break higher. So usually when you see the break above the trend line and it's just marginal, kind of chopping around, can't go much beyond, and then it and then it sells off and breaks back below, that was your fake out move or your bull trap, uh, and then you look for impulsive selling. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some impulsive selling. Doesn't have to happen today, but it could. Uh, the other thing is we had this price channel right here. And I've been kind of trying to draw it different ways, but I can't, you know, you could draw it down here, but that would only give you two data points. So you've got one down here and one right here. And two is just not enough to validate a trend line. So typically I look for, you know, a couple more reactions than just two. Um, so it's somewhere right in here. Uh, it looks like we're starting to break down. It, it's close enough now where I can't say this is the breakdown uh, of this of this price channel, this little price channel here on the hourly. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, there's not enough evidence right now to say, oh, we're breaking and, and there it is. But the one thing that I see that is um, that is breaking is really this daily chart and this longer time frame trend line that's going back all the way to April. Uh, we broke that. Looks like we're back testing. And on the daily, as I zoom into this day's candle, as of right now, we're back below resistance. So we popped above it slightly and we're starting to fail. So looking for some more impulsive selling to the downside. Uh, first target on this, first profit target. I think I've got a gap somewhere. Let's look here. Yeah, we got a high right up in here, uh, 139.32. So you can see this was your high, came back in, tagged it as support right here and then bounced off of it. So I think that's your first level of support coming down to 139. Uh, looking for that price action to continue. All right, moving on. Carvana, another one I've been talking about. It's looked objective. Um, I'll just kind of cover, review the trade. All right, big negative divergence on this one. Here it is right here on the daily chart where momentum's just been really rolling over pretty quickly. And price continued to make slightly new higher highs. Here's a high, a divergent high price. And this right here was a divergent high price. So those were your two most objective, well, this wasn't objective yet because it hadn't broken price support right here though. This was your most objective area because you had broken the price support. Here's your price support, the, the up, upward trend line on this daily chart. 
So you had a divergent high here telling you that price support was going to break, but it hadn't broken yet. So it broke here. You could have gone short right here on the break of price support. Uh, and, you know, and then you just have to ride out the kickback rally because that happens a lot of the time. So what I'll do sometimes, you know, often is when we break price support, I take a starting short position and then I add to it on any kickback rallies. And so, you know, we, we had kickback rally. There's a divergent high right there and a kickback rally being rejected uh, right, at, right at resistance. So zooming in now, everything's in play for this thing to roll over and do a gap fill. Uh, negative divergence, rejection at price support or resistance, I guess, uh, and a big gap to fill right up here. So, But I don't think they're going to probably just fill it by rolling it over during the day. I mean, they could. But I think it's going to come in the form of a gap down. And if that happens, uh, going back to the daily, I'm just trying to point out the possible scenarios. If we gap down, one, you're going to trap a lot of bulls, a lot of buyers that were kind of in this area. That's a decent amount of volume right there uh, and buyers. You gap down, you trap all those people, and then you also create an island reversal top. So here's the potential where you have the gap up. You create the island cluster right up in here and then you gap down and that's a big reversal pattern. So if that, if, if we get the island reversal, I'm not going to cover at that 173.17. I'll be looking to probably cover, uh, you know, a little bit lower, possibly down here at this 114 uh, looks, looks good. Now we don't have the island reversal top yet, you know, the island cluster reversal, but it's a possibility. So we'll watch for that. PHM. Another one, big negative divergence here on the daily. You can see it just negatively diverging where momentum is just fading. It's going lower and lower and lower. Lower highs, lower lows. That's basically what you're looking for. Trending momentum to the downside. There it is right there. And um, while well, price trending to the upside, that tells you that these are fadeable highs, you know, low, you know, low momentum highs, kind of the ending of a move is kind of basically what it's saying is that the momentum is dying, the, the fine, these are the final highs, we're ending the, the uptrend, now look for the downside. Uh, that's, that's how I read this. Now, this had a price channel or a trend line right here on the daily, uh, and zooming in, <clears throat> we broke, here's your breakdown, really right there. This day still closed above the trend, they broke it uh, intraday, but then closed it above. You, want, you have to see that daily close below. Broke the price uh, support right here, and all we've, we've been doing a bunch of kickbacks, series of kickbacks, um, and this has been a, you know quite a, quite a lot, really from the low to the high of 10%. Um, from the time we broke, to all these kickbacks has gone up 10%. Now it looks like we're starting to fade. Um, each one of these highs has been a divergent high with lower momentum, so I've been looking for the rollover. I've been adding to my short position on kickbacks to resistance. So I added here, added here, added here, and now um, looking for it to break. So I've got this short term trend line right here, uh, kind of the last. This is the support that this kickback rally right here has been uh, holding. So I'm looking for that to break. We're starting to drift sideways right here. We've, we've broken it, starting to drift sideways. All right, now we look for the we look for the breakdown now. Does it come today? I don't, you know, I don't think so. I think they're going to gap it, this thing down. I, I really do think it's going to gap down uh, to start up to start the selling. Uh, we also have a little gap right here to fill. Uh, looking at the daily here, and then there's a gap right here on the daily chart down at 39.54. So I think that's your that's my first target, 39.54, first profit target. Uh, from where we're at now to there is a drop of about 18%. So we're looking for that one. XOM, cover it really quickly. I don't see anything bearish still. This thing's just kind of consolidating. Uh, you know, we had we had some bullish uh, price action, some bullish divergences right here. Uh, they were very shallow. They weren't that 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 big, but they were there. You can see. I'll just point them out right here. Momentum started to level out where we were not making lower lows and yet price was continuing to sell off. So that was bullish divergence telling you that the, the downtrend was going to break to the upside. It did right here. Here's your breakout. And it looks like this wants to come in for a kickback rally. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see what it wants to do. Does it, does it run down and tag this 3366? That's support. So 
I suspect we'll hold there uh, and then start to make our way higher. So I'm looking for that. But in general, it's a bullish chart. Uh, and I think we're heading up to this, at least this 41. So nothing's really changed from the last couple of days on this kind of bullish posture. We're just kind of drifting and consolidating as it builds energy to move to the upside. Okay, we'll point this one out. SOXX, this is Semiconductor ETF. Uh, I've been kind of watching it, seeing if it was going to set up. It looks like it's starting to set up, so I want to point it out. Uh, I don't have a position in it yet, but I might take one pretty soon. All right, so here's what we got. Daily negative divergence right here. You can see we made a peak right there in price, peak in momentum, and then we uh, moved higher in price, making uh, a lower momentum indicator right there. So a divergent high, uh, and it's we've got negative divergence in the P, uh, in the PPO. That, that's been there for a while, and the RSI is right there. So we have negative divergence now in SOXX. Now let's narrow it down. Actually, I want to point out the other thing is pretty thin structure on what we've got going on. Look at look at the structure we've had the last couple of days. It's just gapped up and and just done these thin little candles gap up the entire move for the most part a uh, little bit of move intra market but most of the move has been made in the futures market so that's easily fadeable uh, when i mean when i say fadeable i mean institutions can come in and just smash this thing down uh, with volume and there's just no structure or no real buying strength to hold it up because most of the up move took place in the futures market uh, and the futures market overnight is thin so Starting to see this thing break down. Let's look here at the hourly, see if we got any kind of broken levels. Um, yeah, we don't, you know, we don't have a whole lot of, uh, we could probably say it's something like that. Uh, yeah, there it is. Um, so there it is starting to break. Uh, I might take a position on this one actually. So just to recap, negative divergence is now really confirmed because before the reason I didn't point this one out as much as the, the RSI was still heading up, so we could have easily blown past there and you know it would be negative divergence. But we're now, now we've turned down. You can see we're starting to turn down. So now it is negative divergence. Breaking support, kind of that short-term support there. Uh, and so now we look for, you know, the first thing I look for is all these little thin gaps right here to fill. Uh, you know, I'd look for those to start to fill. Maybe find some support right here right there where we have a couple days where it held resistance around the 311 we'll call it 311 312 somewhere right in there that's what i'm looking for for this move at least in the short term DraftKings here looks like it's continuing to break down so going to here's the daily so we hit support right here had a little kickback rally fading it today you can see impulsive sell-off breaking back below support I think if this one goes 47.55, then that should be enough to set this thing in motion down to, my trend lines are moving on me, down to uh, 43.90. So looking for that. Uh, I'm not super interested in this one because I've already caught a 25% downdraft in it right there, uh, but there could be some more. Redfin continues to look good. Uh, big negative divergence here on the daily you can see just continues to build and extend that negative divergence while price continues to grind higher it's not impulsive price movement to the upside it's just marginal and that tells you that the the buyers are, are losing momentum and and it, you see it right here in the in the uh, divergence so <clears throat> now we look for some sort of breakdown you can see they're still trying to hold on to it right here I've got this uh, candle or this trend line right here in the daily. They're just trying to hold on. Uh, so we look for some sort of an impulsive break. Here's the daily. This It looks like it broke yesterday and then it did a little kickback rally. And today they're, they're going to fade it. But uh, still hanging in there. So I, I'm not seeing the signs yet. It's time to enter this thing. But I definitely see the setup. So I'm looking for the signs on that one before entering. Let's look at triple Q's here. All right, triple Q's, what do we got going on? Well, first thing that I pay attention to when I look at this chart is the trend line, the green trend line right here on the daily chart. That's your uptrend line for 2020. That's really the rally that, that's the uh, the Fed induced rally basically. <clears throat> and when they pumped all the stimulus and everything, it created this rally. And 
we broke we broke trend uh, a while ago, and we it looks like we're coming in for a back test. We have not done a full back test, but the other thing is that you know when everyone's looking at a trend line, sometimes it'll fall short. You won't actually get the back test or the you know you won't always get up there. So it could turn down here, uh, turning down as of right now. What I see in the short term, we've got a gap right here at 286. Uh, it's about 286. So I'm expecting probably come down, fill that gap, and then watch. We'll see what the buyers do down there. They should step in and and buy to fill that gap or when that gap fills. Uh, if they don't, then, you know, again, this might be the top. So we'll watch for that. <clears throat> and we'll uh, continue to evaluate, you know, the downside movement. I, I do think, you know, whether we get the full back test all the way up here, and then reject, or if we reject here, I still think that, you know, this is the area, we're in the area where risk reward is not favorable to the upside. I think we're going to reject or sell off somewhere in this area, could be all the way up here at the at this green line, uh, or could be now. And we, we're gonna sell off, we're gonna come back in to the bull market price channel on triple Qs. So this is going all the way back to 2009. Here's your price channel. We've traded within this price channel the entire time in queues except for here and here. Both of these times were prop most likely going to be a bear market, uh, the beginning of the bear market, and the Fed stepped in here, and the Fed stepped in here. So the Fed has corrected what would have been probably the bear market. This first failure might have fallen you know, down to these levels. And then now I still have these longer term targets here, 115 on queues and about 100. Uh, but now the Fed's pumped it up all the way up here. So I'm looking for us to come back down into the price channel, uh, the major price channel, which is going to be, you know, down in here. So that's longer term stuff. That's going to take a little while to play out. For right now, we'll just watch these hourly charts. We'll watch this gap, uh, getting see if it's going to fill. Uh, and maybe they won't fill it today. Maybe they'll fill it in a gap down. If they do that and they and we get a gap down, we've got an island cluster reversal top. So lots of scenarios could play out here. We don't know what's going to happen, <clears throat> but it's good to know the setups, what could happen, so that when you see it, or if you see it, you can act. The SPY has a series of gaps uh, moving in on the daily. You can see we <clears throat> have just about filled <clears throat> we, we did fill this first gap right here. Here's a, a gap fill. And then uh, we got another gap slightly below it sitting at 343.78. Uh, so I expect we'll fill that gap if Q's is going to gap down. Then SPY will probably move down and fill that gap as well. And the SPY has pretty much the same setup as Q's. You've got the upward trend line, the break of trend, doing a back test. So we'll watch to see if uh, SPY follows cues. Uh, Philip Morris, I continue to like this to the long side. Looks like we're just bull flagging right now. So um, I, <clears throat> I started to mark out the flag. We've got a couple more data points now, but it's you know it's kind of a sloppy flag, but they're something like that. Uh, and you've got the the flagpole, and so you extend the flagpole out, and you know puts us up at least up to this high of 82.59. Uh, I do think that we're probably, I, I think we're heading up to this uh, about 90 bucks. That's kind of where my target is on this and I continue to like it. So looking for that to continue to the long side. And that's really all I got today. Um, gold is kind of chopping around. You can see here on the daily. Oh, sorry, this is Barrett Gold. Let me look at gold here. Um, yeah, we're kind of chopping around, uh, but still in that downtrend. So here's your downtrend in gold. We continue to go lower. Uh, and I think we're heading down to 1790 in gold. So that's all I got, guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Leave me a comment below if you have a stock that you want me to look at. Or if you see a setup, uh, let me know. I'm looking for setups uh, as well. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.